It is not clear if the threat from coronavirus is any less today than it was a month ago. So as Americans are getting back to work, I want us right now in this moment to get back to basics. How do we protect ourselves? Joining us now to help us do that, Dr. Stavros Custodius. He's a general surgeon and a top doctor with the Heritage Surgical Group in my home state of New Jersey. Dr. Stavros, first things first, what do people need to know when they go out? The basic rules to stay safe. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, the most, some of the most important stuff is to do the basics. Uh, you know, make wearing masks very important, both protecting everybody from you and, wearing, and protecting you from everybody else. Um, making sure you can keep your distancing rules and not just distance, but also keeping your exposure times down. Try to be less than two minutes in the same room or same place at any time if you can, using drive-throughs as possible. Keeping your hair covered if possible, and also, you know, we don't recommend using gloves. Everybody's wearing gloves. The problem is the outside of those gloves get contaminated with virus, and they they feel they're in, 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 uh, invincible in those gloves. Unfortunately, I see kids with their hands covered in fingerprint finger paints, you know, ready to just contaminate everything and contaminate themselves. So it's better to just keep your hands bare, cover them with uh, hand sanitizer anytime you touch anything. So that I think that's a safer bet. What poses the most risk for us when we go out? Um, you know, honestly, I think it's other people, uh, large crowds. Uh, and people need to be smart and kind of anticipate where you're going to be uh, if there is going to be a large throughput, if there is going to be a large amount of people there. Uh, um, other things in terms of even like what, walking into a restaurant or a public place, people don't realize that some of the most contaminated surfaces are actually the floors. Um, uh, you have to think of uh, uh, surfaces that other people will touch that uh, even if you go sit in a restaurant, you, whoever set that, that glass there, whoever set that silverware there, do you have to worry if they were, uh, if their hands were clean, if they were, if they're, if maybe they're even infected, uh, you know, using a straw, uh, bringing your own silverware may be actual social norm in the future for when you go to a restaurant. Would you use a public restroom? No. <laughs> No, uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, uh, we do know about the virus is that it's spread by uh, oral fecal route. And um, one of the things that um, uh, that is being looked into is whether or not uh, that toilet plume of reported years ago that everybody noticed that every time you flush a toilet, uh, you get this plume of eight to 12 feet of, you know, they studied E. coli. If it's passed by the oral fecal route, could people flushing the toilet with virus in their stool be creating a cloud of virus in bad public restrooms. It's been discussed, we've had, actually had discussions with it, and it also, it sounds almost comical, but it, it, there is science behind it. So we're, we're, I would not go into one personally. And uh, um, I'm curious, uh, and I do know that some people across the country are looking into it, but uh, I'm curious whether or not that could be a place of transmission where there's just a cloud of COVID waiting in rest, public restrooms for you. You're treating patients, you study this virus every day. What have you learned about COVID-19 that you didn't know two months ago? Oh, uh, you know, when this first hit us, we had, no, we had no idea about the basics of how it infects. Uh, and it's been a slow burn of constant landmark uh, discoveries about the actual pathology of this virus, how it infects, where it infects. And one of the things that we've uh, been groundbreaking is that this is not necessarily a primary pneumonia or an infection of your lung it actually is more likely showing a lot of its downside, uh, downstream effects on the body through the, the effects on the blood. You know, it's an infection of the blood. Uh, a lot of people are making analogies of, uh, of treating sick people. It's like treating somebody who's been poisoned or uh, somebody who's uh, got uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. You know, your blood has three major functions, immune, uh, uh, um, uh, clotting, uh, um, uh, and oxygen delivery and carbon dioxide delivery. And it appears that this virus really hits you on all three fronts and causes a lot of the death and sickness through that mechanism. When this first started, it was all long and everybody goes on a ventilator. Then they said, wait a minute, we're putting people on ventilator. It's actually increasing the death rate. So they actually brought it back. So we're not ventilating everybody uh, in the hospitals. So it's important to know. Wow. Then do you share Dr. Fauci's optimism about the drug remdesivir? Um, yeah, a lot of people need to understand that most diseases aren't treated with a silver bullet. Uh, and doctors like to like that idea, even the general public does. That's why I became a surgeon, right? Surgeons uh, uh, generally like to have that silver bullet of surgery makes you better. 
uh, viruses and illnesses, uh, think of any infection, it's a multi-phase approach. The, the study with remsemdivir, uh, it actually only brought the mortality rate from 11.8% down into the eights. So you've got now one bullet, it's just one more bullet in the multi-chamber gun of weapons against the virus. If you can get another two or three of those of a 3% decrease in mortality rate, now you're going from 11% to 8%, and it's gonna be phased from eight, we could get another one that gets us down to six or five, and it's that phase uh, uh, approach that helps reduce your mortality rate and get you an actually effective treatment regimen. So it's the first step, it's exciting to see something that's vetted science to actually say, this is the actual treatment uh, uh, and it's effective. And that's, I think that's one of the reasons to share, share that excitement because hopefully we'll have a few more of these and we're on top of this virus. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.